let's get this show on the road. Hope you're doing well today. Here's another rendition of Zephyr 101. Um, great to be back. It's been a while. Uh, it took the summer off to some extent. Um, we went to Prague, did some presentations there. So I believe those are up now. Maybe I should put those in the description. So I will, uh, I'll put those in the description after the show. But um, today we are going to be focusing on uh, provisioning for the NRF 91 it should work for the NRF 9160. Um, the NRF 9161, I believe, should work just the same. But uh, let's let's dive in. Um, if you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe. Um, I'm going to be returning to you guys uh, on a weekly basis here with um, some tips and tricks as I can learn them myself through Zephyr. Uh, it's crazy. I've been work, you know, using Zephyr for a long time, but even just uh, attending um, Zephyr Development Conference in person, uh, people walked up to me and said, hey, you can do this. Hey, you can do this. It's like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> so it's, um, it's part of this presentation is actually some things that came up uh, during the presentation, and we'll, uh, we'll jump into that. But here is... Um, here what we're talking about. So you can provision uh, certificates to an NRF9160 in different ways. Uh, we're just going to be going over they're, they're different flavors, I guess you could say. It's all kind of doing the same thing, but uh, in the end, you'd, all you really want is making sure that your certificates are loaded to the device so it can be used for a TLS, DTLS connection. Uh, we'll be talking about um, using the AT commands and specifically the AT console. It's kind of like how I started, probably how a lot of uh, a lot of you who are whoever's doing development on the NRF91, um, you're you're probably using that. Similarly, uh, I wanted to make it really easy to use the shell, um, send these commands over the shell for provisioning purposes. Because sometimes, you know, having the shell for other reasons is there. You know, reading and writing from um, the uh, setting subsystem, things like that. Those things are ne necessary, so we needed a solution for that as well. And then I'll, I'll be touching on self-provisioning, um, self So, and we'll, we'll get into what that actually means in a second. Uh, just for laying the groundwork here, I just wanted to talk about how these certificates are stored in the device, uh, and they are stored by tag. So the tag is essentially a number um, one to whatever you want. And this number is what you're indicating when you're setting up a TLS or DTLS connection. And um, now there's there's two different ways, like kind of certificate types that you can refer to. And these are uh, PSK um, plus the PSK identity or the you know PKI or we know it public private keys and CA certs. Um, I put Goliath primarily uses PSK. They do have the ability now to use uh, uh, PKI, but um, they're mostly supporting. Well, last time I looked a couple weeks ago, it's it's still mostly uh, PSK, and then um, AWS uses uh, public-private CA certs for their authentication in uh, AWS IoT. So the first thing we're going to be touching on is the AT console for the NFR ninety one sixty. This is the what's provided to you if you load the AT underscore client sample. And um, the one thing that you can do is you can, uh, Nordic has provided their NRF Connect for desktop tools, and those are the tools that you generally connect to uh, together so you can actually produce some certificate provisioning. Uh, in important things to note is that you obviously have to have your console enabled um, and also making sure that the modem library and then the ET host library, that's probably the most important one for this to work. So, so important caveats here, you have to have a USB or UART interface configured for the console. Um, configuration is set correctly and the uh, console interface isn't used for anything else, so shell. Anything that's conflicting with the console because the shell will take over the console. So you have, it's either or in this situation, so we'll just be hitting on this a little bit first. Uh, here is the AT client sample actually running. You can see it just got a little boot up message and then I'm just executing an AT command and hey, it's there. Um, and we got an okay response, so that's great. Uh, you can use, so then from there, 
this is one way you can actually load the the keys the um the new and improved cellular monitor uh the the lte link monitor is deprecated so um, i haven't had it actually maybe i'll just do a video on this soon because i haven't had a chance to really dig into it yet but um, you can put in ca certs you can set your tag you see that security tag over there psk uh, shared identity or the identity and then shared key <clears throat> You can do either or, you can do whatever you want, you can delete it from the device, it all kind of does it. But that, all it is is a front end for the actual AT command. So you, you can put all that stuff in there, copy paste, and then it'll just run the AT commands that are necessary to actually write it to the device. And we'll actually, towards uh, in the next couple of slides, we'll be actually getting into uh, what commands are necessary for actually doing it. Um, you can actually look at the output. So when you're running this uh, certificate manager, when you're loading a certificate, you can see the actual manual AT commands that are being uh, c executed below in the log. Um, I cut out the log uh, there, um, but you'll you'll get the idea if you see it. Um, I also implemented an AT command. So Nordic has their own AT command um, CLI or shell prompt, and that works to some extent. The only problem is if you're putting in something with uh, interesting characters uh, or ones that aren't supported by the shell, you'll surely get an error. So what I did was I, I went a little bit further and I actually created a raw command. So the raw command is lot, basically says, I'm going to write X bytes to the shell and uh, I just want you to process it as one command when it's done. And uh, that's what we're doing here. It, 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 it works. It's helpful because you can write, you know, complicated certificate keys and things like that um, without the uh, the parsers to get all messed up. So I put a link to that in the description. You can definitely check it out if you want. Um, one of the important things here is the that wild card. Uh, if you use any special characters, it will uh, it'll get angry at you. So you don't want that to happen. So the cool thing is, I kind of mentioned this before, is you, the, the shell gives you a lot of options, a lot of functionality that you can use out of the box. You can add certain shell functionality as well, um, or add on to it like I did. Um, in this case, we're just allowing you to run AT commands. Uh, the prefix to it is actually just eight underscore AT space, and then you just write whatever AT command. Um, the raw mode is generally useful for writing certificates, especially really long ones if you're doing PKI. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's been handy for provisioning devices uh, before they go out into the field. Um, here is a here's the output of the help dialog. You can see exactly what is it, it can do. So hope that uh, hope that makes sense. This is just an add-on to the AT console that was before, but allows you to use the shell. And here I am actually um, running some commands. You can see, hey, okay, I'm doing an AT command. That's just like kind of an echo. I'm putting the device into offline mode with that AT plus C fun equals four. You actually can see the, the cellular disconnect event there that's happening. So it's actually doing things. Um, here is an example of uh, actually writing the PSK identity and the PSK uh, shared, uh, shared key here. I'm using the raw command. Um, so from, if you actually take, you can actually take this AT uh, pound sign and you can put this, not pound sign, uh, percentage sign. And you can put this in like a text editor. I use VS Code. You can actually highlight the whole line and it'll give you how many characters. So you can reference that using your AT raw command. So I just AT raw, all the raw, uh, all the raw goodies. Um, I am missing a, a quote there, a double quote there. But uh, you just hit enter a couple of times and then it's loaded in. And then the same thing for the, uh, see that one has one. Uh, this one, you just this is the hex version of the the PSK that gets generated. You have to do some special uh, special stuff to make that work. So, because you can't always write hex directly to uh, as a character, so they just made it. It's probably just the limitation of the modem firmware and also just dealing with uh, characters. So you can see here it's eighty eight characters long. I'm pasting it in there and then it's getting written to the device. So, oh, I don't want to skip too far here. So all that's doing is the same thing that you would be doing in the AT console. 
uh, just that you're writing the, in this case, uh, PSK to the device. And then when you are connecting with whatever client you're using, maybe it's something like a co-op client, Goliath, something like that. It'll, you can say, Hey, I want to use, in this case, um, the tag is five, one, five, seven, six, five, eight, six, eight. So that is the tag that you can reference in your, uh, in your server client. And that's what's being referenced. Uh, there are some other things you have to worry about in terms of making sure that the modem TLS implementation is put first. Uh, Zephyr does some interesting things there. Um, and maybe that's another thing I can talk about. Uh, I'm going to write this down because I'm having brain blasts as we're doing this. Um, and I'm gonna bring you guys so much content here. And of course, if you guys have suggestions uh, or things that you think of that you might want to see me cover um, more specifically about Nordic parts, uh, because I have those here easily and readily available, um, please you know, leave a comment and uh, I can definitely try to cover them here. And um, where did I move the console? Uh, desktop, nice. Next, you can actually generate certificates on ship. So this is something that was brought up to me. And this is a newer feature that uh, is included in um, and released in modem firmware 1.3.x. So since modem firmware 1.3, you can actually generate certificates on chip. Uh, because it does, you, be, it does provide some output, I actually was having issues, at least with my AT shell implementation, getting the um, output of this command. So the best thing you can do is use the AT console, at least for now. I might play with it some more just to see what I can do, but I, I generally take the keys from, I generate them elsewhere and then I, I load them on. So it's never been the other way around. But uh, if you think about it, it's more secure and your private keys never leave the device, which is fantastic. Um, the only caveat is I don't know how strong the entropy on the device is when it generates the uh, private keys, but that's a security discussion to have later. Uh, all it is, here is an example. You're putting the device into, um, I'll actually jump into that in a second, but you can see I'm running that AT key gen command and that will generate a private key and then spit the uh, public key out for you. And here is an example of it running, actually just getting the full public key here uh, that you can use for if you want to throw it onto a server for client authentication, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there are some cool things you can do. You can do certificate signing. Um, you can return a certificate signing request and then push it back and forth. Um, if you have, if you're using CA server um, things or CA cert for things like that too. So Nordic has thought of some things here. There, it's it's helpful. So. The, uh, the parameters to this, so if you look at it, there's a couple of parameters, that 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, and 1. So that first ta is the tag. I'm um, just putting in a random ar arbitrary tag. Um, the second arg argument determines what type of what you want to be generating. So it's either a signing request or a private key. And then uh, what you want returned is uh, more specifically for that second option. You can either return... Uh, I might be wrong here for the actual the second argument, but um, you get a signing request or public key. Pri uh, but I, I put all that stuff. I don't use this a lot, but I did, I did put the link for this command in the description below. So if you're really interested in using this, um, definitely check out the documentation because uh, I tried to be knowledgeable about this stuff, but uh, I could always, I, I always get things wrong. So um, in terms of just like going off the top of my head. So definitely check those out. It's very helpful. And it, uh, if you want to keep your private key safe, that's a great uh, place to start. But uh, in conclusion, you can create the certificates on and off the chip, which is nice for the NF9160, depending on your use case. One major thing that uh, hiccup when I first started dealing with things is just making sure that the modem is in offline mode before writing those certificates. Um, it's as simple as running that cfun equals four command. And uh, if you're loading certs to an application and you want to have other shell functionality, maybe if you're doing different types of provisioning, then, and you don't want to kind of reinvent the wheel, then AT shell might be your best bet. But 
as you can see there are some edge cases where that might not work and uh, everything that I've discussed minus the, uh, the links to um, Zephyr Talks which I will get uploaded on the description shortly uh, are all there so thanks for uh, thanks for for turning to me here I really appreciate everybody coming checking out those these videos it's been great talking to some of uh, everybody in the audience. A lot of people at the conference walked up to me and said, hey, been watching your videos. They're super helpful. So actually re really appreciate um, the feedback, all the questions and comments that come in through here. Uh, kind of keep me going. So it's been great to see uh, people in person. And also it's always great to get more feedback in my email and uh, in the comments below. So if you do have comments, shoot them my way. I always try to get back in touch and reply if uh, if necessary and if you have other kind of zephyr e type support questions you can always check out uh, community.circodojo.com the link is below kind of the form that I, I use to kind of interact with customers but you're more than welcome to and uh, ask any zephyr related questions there um, zephyr does have a discord a discord right not a slack uh, yeah they have a discord where people are kind of online and around or you can check out the um, the re repository on GitHub. Uh, sometimes people put questions there and like the discussions area. Um, those are just some resources for folks who might not be able to get uh, direct support for what they're looking for. But that is about it for today. Oh, and don't forget if you um, if you like to get the heads up uh, via email before these live sessions begin, check out. Uh, my website, jerrywolf.com, uh, right on the homepage, you can sign up for my mailing list. Um, all I do is send out reminders about uh, live streams and also anything about the NRF 60 or any of the other boards that I've been working on. Um, <clears throat> it's all right there. I'm not going to spam you. I, you know, I only send out an email maybe once a week at most. So really appreciate, <clears throat> really appreciate you guys. Let me just double check. If there's no other comments or questions. I don't think so. So. We'll end this today. It was a fairly quick one, but um, we'll see what we can come up with next week. So I really appreciate you being here. See you on the next one. Bye.